Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and today we're going to take a look at the Moondrop Sparks. If you haven't heard of this, this is a true wireless IEM from the maker of some of my favorite audiophile IEM. So ostensibly, we've got true wireless here tuned for nerds like me, and probably like you too. Um, the Moondrop Sparks, I feel like Moondrop has kind of been teasing these for quite a while now, and maybe the release of them got a little bit delayed, but it looks like today, officially, the Sparks are actually finally available. Um, I saw them on ShenzenAudio.com, link in the description down below. Spoiler, they also sent these to me for review. Um, but they're available now for 90 bucks, And, well, 90 bucks is, you know, definitely cheaper than something like AirPods, but maybe not a ton cheaper. Um, but it's definitely competitive, or there's a bunch of other audiophile kind of tuned IEMs that these things are a little competitive with. And that's what we're gonna talk about, how these compare today. That was kind of an awkward sentence, but um, basically in this live stream, we'll talk about the build, the functionality, and stuff like that. And I'll probably spend more time talking about the functionality here than I normally would with the Moondrop product because it's an electronic and it's kind of complicated. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that stuff and then we'll talk about the sound what I think about the sound and how they compare to some other true wireless IEMs. And the two that I'm going to focus on, kind of two of my favorites in the sort of, you know, uh, music listening space. And they are the Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus, uh, which I reviewed previously. And I think that's probably my favorite sounding true wireless earbud up to this point. Um, but I'm also going to compare them against the Earphone Cross Olive uh, earphone free pros or it's a really long name, but um, that's another recent IEM that's come out and it's kind of more similarly priced to the sparks here, but like all my other reviews, this is a live stream. So if you're watching now, and you have any questions about the sparks, I guess anything else we talk about today, leave it in the live chat. And for now, I'm going to ignore the live chat as best as possible. I'm going to try and get through this review. Uh, and then at the end of the review, I'll give it a score and then we'll have a little conversation. But for now, let's go ahead and start by diving into the build of the Moon Drop Sparks, which we have here sitting on the table. And I've got them surrounded by the things that come inside the box. You don't get this phone, but um, what you get inside the box, and this is a cute box, uh, it actually looks like what they've done is they've, um, they've sold this as sort of three different colors, and each color has a different box. This is the box that the, the dark gray kind of black color comes in but I'm guessing that the accessories and stuff are gonna be all the same. So you do get a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. So yes, this does charge via USB-C, which is nice to see. Um, and then up here, you can see the fairly robust selection of ear tips that you get. Frankly, I'm pretty surprised to have this many ear tips come with it. And honestly, I just stuck with these ones. These are basically Moondrop typical ear tips. These are some foam tips. And then this is just like a bunch of weird shapes and uh, sizes of more, I guess, TWS style ear tips. You can see that they're kind of shallow fit. Um, I don't know, I, I didn't try those things. I imagine they'll make a difference for fit, but I didn't have any issues with fit using the, uh, the original kind of moon drop style. Um, before we get into talking about the fit too much, let's talk about this case, which honestly is a little bit on the chonkers side in, ter in terms of true wireless earbuds, right? Let's see, I'll bring, I'm not gonna compare them to the AirPods in terms of sound, cause these are pretty different, but like this is, this is kind of the standard for the best size true wireless earbuds can get. And you can see that the, the Moondrop Sparks are definitely quite a bit larger than the AirPods, but that's okay. Um, the, the case itself is kind of wrapped in this, I don't know, it's like a rubberized material which gives it kind of a nice soft touch to it, but it all does also have kind of a downside to it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to show this to you on camera, but basically when I put this thing in my pocket, yeah, I wish I could show this to you on camera. Uh, you ever do that move where you put your hand against your pocket and then kind of slide the thing, you, 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 you slide the thing out of the pocket? That doesn't really work here with the Sparks because of that rubberized coating. And again, this, these are the kinds of comments I wouldn't really be talking about with most Moondrop IEMs, but because this is a true wireless, it's got, it's got some different challenges to it. Um, so there's that. It's a little bit chonky. It's a little rubberized and I'm not necessarily a big fan of it. And then the aesthetic of this thing, I, I don't know. It's interesting. Um, again, there are three different colors and the other colors, 
Yeah, I think it looks like it's uh, pink and purple. They don't look nearly as kind of like futuristic robotic as this set does. I believe this was called the international color initially. I don't know if they're still calling it that, but um, I don't know. It's fairly interesting looking, kind of looks a little anime, which is what you would expect from Moondrop. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I gotta say, I'm not in love with the aesthetic of it um, and the, the size of the case, but it is what it is. And then I guess if you really weren't a big fan of the case, you could put the case inside of another case. Uh, this is a case that comes, well, he, it doesn't come with the standard um, Sparks. I believe you have to buy it extra and it looks like it's priced pretty reasonably. It's about an extra $5 if you buy them together or 10 bucks if you buy it separately. And it's an interesting case that fits it kind of like a glove. I like the aesthetic of this a little bit better, although obviously it's gonna make it even chonkier. Um, and you know, you can see that the, the lid will kind of come back with it. It kind of opens up as one piece, but I did find that this thing would fall off. And personally, I found it to be a little bit more irritating than it was worth as much as I did like the aesthetic of it. And it does have that magnetic clasp. So I don't know, good job in that case, but still not quite there for me in terms of wanting to use it day to day. Uh, in terms of fit, let's pull out these earpieces so you can take a look at them. Um, you know, these are kind of shaped, you know, unlike any other or most other true wireless earbuds, these are kind of shaped like IEMs, you know, kind of like your semi custom style fit. Uh, definitely not fitted quite the same way that you would get on some other semi custom IEMs, but generally I found these things fit pretty well. I think the stems on them are a little bit on the long side. I just started playing music. Um, the stems on them are a little bit on the long side and isolation surprisingly is not that strong. Let's see if I can zoom in. I'm probably not gonna be able to do a good job of demonstrating it, but because the stems are so long, um, these things mostly don't touch my ear. It's mostly just the ear tip that creates contact. And again, I didn't play with the ear tips. Maybe I could have gotten a different fit or a little bit deeper of a fit if I had played with them, but I honestly didn't have an issue with this fit, despite the fact that they kind of stick out a little bit. Um, very, very secure. In fact, during my unboxing video, I did a very rigorous head shake test. That I'm not gonna attempt right now, uh, but they stayed in place, so uh, that much is good. So yeah, I didn't honestly have any issues with the fit and comfort on these things. They're pretty solid, but they are definitely a little bit on the larger, bulkier side in general. Anything else I wanted to talk about on the build? I mean, I guess it's worth calling out before we get too far away from this, and this will seg into our next section, um, is there are no physical buttons on this, which is fairly common with true wireless earbuds. It's all touch controls. And personally, I'm not a big fan of touch controls in general. I don't know why every true wireless IM has got to go with touch controls, but I guess Apple did it, so now everyone's got to try and, and do, it, do their version of it. And here, on, on, I guess, again, this is going to lead us into talking about um, functionality, at least they've actually done the touch controls pretty well. I gotta be honest. I mean, despite the fact when I just put them in my ears on camera, they started playing for the most part, I didn't have issues with the touch controls accidentally or inadvertently activating when putting them in my ears, which is definitely not the case with all other true wireless IMs that I've got. Like the Galaxy Buds Plus, I love these things, but man, I cannot put them in my ears without accidentally toggling play and pause. And that was pretty much never an issue except for that one time here on camera. Uh, so good evidence. But anyway, uh, generally pretty good here. And the reason why is that they don't have any functionality mapped to single tap. And I think that's smart. To toggle pause and play, it's a double tap. Now that does make it a little bit more finicky in that, you know, you got to make sure that you hit, you double tap the right spot. Um, and, and sometimes I did find myself like maybe t double tapping up here and it didn't quite activate it. And so you got to be, you know, pretty specific with where you tap, but that's kind of just comes, comes with the territory. That's kind of par for the course with touch controls and, and part of why I'm just not really a big fan of touch controls in general. But yeah, I guess I can give you a quick overview of the controls that you have here. Um, because there's no single tap, there's not a ton of controls on here, but I think that what they went with, what they chose was pretty tasteful and pretty good. So again, double tap to toggle, pause and play. Um, if you triple tap on the left or the right, you get track skipping forward and backward, and that is about it. So no volume controls, um, which again, you know, some, some true wireless IMs will give you volume controls on like single tap or something like that. And I, and I personally, I just don't think it's worth 
having a single tap as a thing. And I, I, I do appreciate that they at least um, put all the functionality behind at least a double tap or a triple tap. Now, let's see, other stuff we can talk about, functionality, battery life. I gotta be honest, like I, I did not run these things out of battery. In fact, I didn't know what the battery claims were gonna be on the Sparks until uh, Shenzhen Audio posted their listing for these things this morning. And it's pretty crazy, actually. The claimed battery life is eight hours on the Buds plus 48 hours with the charging case, which that's a lot of battery life. And I just, I never listen to these things for more than eight hours straight. I don't know, I'm sure there are people out there who will. Eight hours, that'll get you through a working day, but I just pretty much never listen to true wireless IMs that long, so I appreciate that it's that long. It'll get you through most flights, but I never, I didn't test it, right? I can't tell you that it definitely does or definitely doesn't last eight hours because I listen to it for maybe like an hour at a time max. Um, so I guess I gotta say the battery life in my experience has been good, but again, um, maybe I didn't do the best testing of it. So that much, I gotta say is pretty good about like the, the difficult software uh, execution here on the Sparks, right? There's a lot of things in that software experience that you can get bad. Um, and maybe, again, I don't love touch controls, but what they did with touch controls, I think they actually did it surprisingly well, better than some other bigger manufacturers, if I'm honest. So that much is good. Um, what's maybe not the best, at least in my experience with the, the Moondrop Sparks, if you watch my live stream, you might have, or my unboxing live stream, you might have noticed I had a hard time getting these things to pair uh, with my Mac. And that continued once I went to a different Mac. Uh, and then even when I tried just pairing them here with the Sony phone, uh, this is an Android Xperia 10. And my initial experience with pairing these was surprisingly frustrating. Um, I did end up reaching out to Shenzhen Audio. They, they provided me some instructions um, that kind of, you know, told me how to reset these things to factory and that did help, but it didn't help entirely. And I, I did run into those issues again as I moved them from one device to another. So I don't know, I, I just, I would expect that maybe the initial pairing experience might be a little bit problematic, but once I had them paired for the most part, they were pretty good and pretty re reliable. There were some times when, you know, I would take these things out of the case and if I wasn't, if I didn't pull them out at kind of the same time, like if I pulled one out, waited a second and then pulled this one out, sometimes I would have, you know, more pairing issues where the phone would connect to one of them, but they wouldn't be paired to each other and then volume would come out. So like there were some issues there. Um, and then another issue that I had with this, and this is maybe more of a, just a nitpick and a complaint, but it's just kind of like the boot up sounds that you get when you take a wireless earbud out of its case, right? Some things will just give you a, a nice soft beep and let you know that everything's working and some, of, some, some wireless stuff is just really overly verbose. And I found that the sparks kind of fall into that latter category. When you take them out, each earbud will kind of independently say connecting um, and if you pull them out at the same time, they'll be synchronized, but if you pull them out at slightly different times, they'll be out of sync, which is a little annoying. And then once they do connect, there's a boot -oop, and then there's a connection to your phone and they'll say connected. So it's just kind of like a verbose, uh, over, overly long transition period to get these things out of the case, which again, if you're gonna wear these things for eight hours straight, probably not gonna be a big deal for you. But again, the way that I mostly listen to these things is about 30, yeah, probably about 30 minute periods. Uh, and every 30 minutes I was having to go through that boot up time. So um, that's me being nitpicky about the user experience stuff. And again, um, that's honestly pretty common with a lot of true wireless stuff, but those are the sorts of things that frankly, I was a little concerned about uh, when I heard that Moondrop was gonna make a true wireless IM. So I think they did an okay job here. Again, the touch controls, they did a pretty solid job on, but there are definitely some things in here that I find a little bit lacking. Now, the good stuff is that once you do get them connected, I found that the Bluetooth range in them was actually pretty solid. I don't know if it's something with my MacBook Air or what, but like once these were connected to my MacBook, I that was in my living room and I was able to basically tour my entire house without breaking connection. I was pretty surprised by that. When I was connected to my Xperia, the range wasn't quite that good, but it was still very, very solid. Um, and then the other thing about the Bluetooth that's worth calling out is that these support AppDex, which if you're not familiar with it, there's just, there's different codecs for Bluetooth 
music transmission or audio transmission, and Aptex is on the higher end. It's not LBAC, uh, but it is on the higher end versus something like SBC or AAC. And I had no issue with Aptex showing up here on my Xperia 10. As soon as I connected these things, my phone would let me know there's an Aptex device connected and music was streaming to these things over Aptex. So that's gonna get us into talking about the sound quality here on the Moondrop Sparks. And for the most part, I think these things actually sound pretty good. I wasn't sure what to expect with the tuning. And if you're familiar with like Moondrop Aria and uh, the, the Starfield, these things are a little bit more on the more forward, kind of brighter tune versus the warmer laid back tune of the, the Aria and the Starfield. Um, but bass quantity is actually not really sacrificed here. There's actually a pretty decent amount of bass. It's just not quite as forward, it's not quite as elevated into the upper bass, so it doesn't intrude much on the mid range. For the most part, you get kind of a fairly open Again, forward, upper, mid-range, and lower treble region. Uh, and that's generally how I would describe the kind of sound signature of this thing. It's maybe a little bit on the thin sounding uh, in the mid-range, um, but the, uh, the, the decently meaty bass on here, I do find keeps it from sounding you know, overly gutless or anything like that. So now what I like about the sound here on the Moondrop Sparks, I mean, I'll just start off and say, I think that bass is actually pretty nice. Um, you know me, I'm not necessarily a fan of a ton of bass, and there is elevated bass here, but it's quite well done. It's, I think, well isolated into the sub bass with a decent bit of mid bass to give it some punch and body, um, but it, it's never really smeary. I find it, you know, I find it, you know, it's honestly a little bit prominent in the mix when I was listening to music with bass guitars and kick drums. They came through pretty clearly, um, almost, you know, slightly forward, but uh, never to the point that they came across muddy or anything like that at all. So, um, and I do also think that that bass presence here gives these things a pretty nice depth. Now, I don't think that imaging on these things is standout, but it's a wireless IM, it's Bluetooth, and, and frankly, I think these things are doing a pretty decent job there. It's not bad. Um, and part of that I would probably attribute to the fairly open mid-range, which is, again, a thing I like about these. They are not like a consumery V-shaped sound signature which I guess you wouldn't expect for Moondrop, but honestly, I kind of expected these to be tuned more like the Aria and the Starfield, but these are, I find, a little bit more open in the mid-range and a little bit more forward, which I think I like generally. Now, what I don't necessarily love about the sound here on the Sparks is a few things. I mean, I think the, the, the forwardness in the upper mid-range and especially in the lower treble is probably a little bit overdone here on the Sparks, it can give these things, it can make these things sound a little bit thin. Um, and I do find that the lower treble can be a little bit on the messy side uh, and occasionally a little bit grating, honestly. Like vocals can come across a tad nasally. Uh, and resolution, well, I mean, this a Bluetooth earphone. Um, I found that resolution on these things was fine, uh, but not standout or anything like that. So that's kind of how I feel about the Moondrop Sparks. I think sound-wise, these things are pretty solid, um, pretty satisfying, and even if, you know, you're afraid of, like, for my taste, right, it's got that upper mid-range and treble focus, which I generally like, um, but it doesn't really sacrifice the bass quantity, so I think it's a pretty safe tune for a lot of people, but how does it compare to some other kind of audiophile-minded true wireless earphones? So let's go ahead and break in, bring in the earphone Cross Olive Free Pros, I don't know. The, the name on this thing is pretty long, but um, basically this is an, an earfun earbud that uh, another YouTube reviewer, Olive, uh, collaborated on, and he did the tuning for this thing, which is actually pretty cool. And between these two, um, well, one, you can see the case size is actually pretty different. I do actually like how small this case is. Um, I won't get too much into the functionality though, because there are some functionality things about the earphones that I find a little bit annoying, uh, but just purely on sound, and that's where I'm gonna focus my comparisons. Um, generally, I would say that the tuning here is a little bit, well, quite a bit more laid back, a, a warmer tune. Um, I do find that the treble on these things is generally more pleasant here on the, the Olive earphones, um, but maybe slightly on the dark side, especially in that lower treble region. Um, 
Resolution, I would say, is probably about on par, even though it's interesting that these support only SBC. There's no AppDex and not even AAC. There's just SBC, but I would say that resolution to my ear, and I didn't, you know, I guess I didn't do extensive testing of resolution, but to my ear, they sound about on par, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, so yeah, the, the general differences here is gonna be that tune. Do you want a more forward, brighter sound with slightly more grating treble, or do you want a more laid back, relaxed tune with I think a warmer mid-range and maybe slightly, I don't know, I think the bass presence on them honestly is, is pretty even. Um, but just kind of a warmer, more laid back tune that's maybe a little bit dark in the treble. Uh, for my tastes, honestly, I don't know, I think the general tonality, I would, oof, that's actually a pretty tough pick, uh, just based purely on audio. I think I'd probably, I think I'd probably find the earphones a little bit more uh, relaxing and satisfying though. So let's bring in here the Galaxy Buds Plus. And I know there's a newer version of the Galaxy Buds. There's a Galaxy Buds Pro, right? Is that what it is? But I think these ones are still my personal favorite. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time comparing these things to the Galaxy Buds Pro, but these are kind of, um, they're, they're a little bit more forward in the tune. And I think between these three, I would actually kind of put these tonally in between the ear funds and the moon drops, right? Whereas the, the moon drop is fairly forward in the upper mid range and lower treble. The ear funds are fairly laid back and slightly dark in the lower treble. I find the Galaxy Buds kind of slot in between, which if that's what you're looking for and in between, I you could say that's definitely the, the better one. And, and for my tastes, generally I prefer the sound here on the Galaxy Buds. I find that versus the moon drops, the Galaxy Buds are um, just the mid range feels a little bit fuller, slightly warmer, but not really a ton warmer. Um, resolution I found generally pretty, quite a bit stronger here on the Galaxy Buds. Um, imaging and stuff like that I also found stronger here. I did, I don't know, there's also just kind of a general sense that these sound a little bit neater than the Moon Drops. Uh, and I think that's just kind of has to do with the execution of that lower treble. So I think that's basically gonna do it for my thoughts here on the Moon Drop Sparks. Out of five stars, I'm gonna go, go ahead and give these things three stars. I think, you know, there's some things about the build quality or the, the form factor of it that I don't love. Some people are not as particular about the size of the case as I am, but I'm a pretty big stickler for case qual or just case ergonomics. And this isn't my favorite. Um, and then the sound quality on this is, I think actually pretty solid, uh, but not necessarily gonna be my new favorite for true wireless IEMs. But for 90 bucks, I don't know, there's definitely still a pretty decent argument for it. And that's gonna be my thoughts on the Moondrop Sparks. So if you're interested in checking out the Moondrop Sparks, link in the description below. Again, shout out to Shenzhen Audio for providing them for review. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding that YouTube bell, and then I'll see you in the next live stream where we can have a conversation like I'm about to have with the folks that are here now. Until then, till the next one, I suppose, I'll see you. All right, folks, I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to clean up that outro. I feel like I'm, I'm cramming too many things in there. Um, but yeah, let me, let me catch up with the live chat and see, see how things are going. And hopefully, I just heard a leaf blower outside. Hopefully that wasn't too loud on the microphone, but let me know. Did anyone else hear that leaf blower? And if not, yes. All right, let's see. Oof, all right, a lot of live chat. Um, I'll try and catch up with this as quickly as possible but apologies if I skip anybody. Tom Reinch, how's it going? True Logic, what's up? Audio Fool, how's it going? Kiseki, howdy. Rob Hawk, Don Trumpione, y'all, what's up? Scott Pledger, how's it going? Um, Tom, you asked a question about the Edemotive Bluetooth cable. I've never used it, so I have zero thoughts on that. Uh, and then Scott, you're curious. So you said you're excited for this review and you're curious how they compare to things like the BMW PI5 and 7. I'm pretty sure I've not heard those. Is that a true wireless? Because I haven't heard any true wireless from BMW. I have heard, I think the BMW PX, it's a over, over ear noise canceling headphone. I didn't like that one that very much though. Josh, what's up? How's it going? Welcome. 
generic username saying, I ordered the Sparks as a replacement for Lipertech Tevis. They're falling apart sound-wise and I'm making an upgrade. So I haven't actually heard the Lipertech Tevis. For those that aren't familiar with them, um, I've, again, I've never heard them. I've just seen the frequency responses, but they look like they're tuned kind of like an Edemotic ER2XR. Like it looks like an Edemotic tune with quite a bit of sub bass emphasis. So I've heard really good things about them, but I haven't heard them myself. So I don't know. If they actually sounded like the Edemotic ER2XR, I would probably pick that over the Moondrop Sparks, but I have no idea if they actually do sound like that. Zaid, how's it going? Glad you can make it. Good to see you again. Sean, same here. It's good to see you again. My Life Matters saying, Olav got an earbuds collab. Yeah. Yeah, he did, which is cool. Uh, I, I, I like the idea of uh, audio reviewers or just prominent community folks partnering with manufacturers to create products that sound the way that they want them to. Um, and hopefully that actually resonates with the audience, which might not be the case. I don't, I don't think you'd want my tuned earphone, would you? El Jefe, how's it going? Sean, you're saying you got your earphone free pros, the original version, and you use the Wavelet app and it's a champ. Cool. Scott Pleasure saying the case for the case is interesting. That's right. We heard you like cases, so we got you a case to put your case in a case. Um, I think it looks cool, like it's handsome. Uh, and honestly, it does kind of satis uh, satisfy, it, it solves that problem I had with these things in a pocket where this is no longer a gripping material and it'll slide out of a pocket, but it does make it a little bit extra bulky. It does make it handsome though. Saeed, I see you're asking about how these compare to the Starfield. I did talk about that briefly. Hopefully that covered, covered it. Neil, the Grateful Dad, do they cause cancer? Only four, uh, but what, but what not? Use a wireless signal. Uh, having trouble with that one. Uh, my guess is no, they do not cause cancer, but not a scientist. Actually, you know what? I take that back. Everything causes cancer. We are all going to die of cancer. Scott Pledger, you're saying you also hate touch controls. You never found them to be both intuitive and consistently functional. Yeah, I find, like I hate to be like the guy that defends Apple, but I feel like Apple actually does touch controls pretty well. The AirPods, I really never have issues with them. Um, the AirPods Pro, they moved to, it's kind of a touch control. You have to pinch it, but it's not really a, a button. Um, but I think that also, like I just never, I never inadvertently do anything with AirPods, whether the original AirPods or the AirPods Pro. Um, so I think they did it, I think they did it best. Now they don't have the most functionality built into those controls. A lot of these earbuds, and the earphone is a pretty good example of this, a lot of these earbuds will pack a ton of controls into them with just like weird combinations of tapping. Like if I tap on the right ear, it goes volume up, tap left, goes volume down. If I double tap, it toggles pause play. If I triple tap the left one, it goes between noise canceling, transparency mode and not. If I triple tap the right one, I don't even know what it, like it's, it's a bunch of stuff. And so you get a bunch of functionality, but I find that the result is that it's just kind of a mess to use. Um, whereas, you know, something like the moon drops are simpler, fewer functionalities, but I prefer, I prefer the fewer functionalities. Oh, and El Jefe, I see you're saying you'd be shocked to see Aptex or LDAC. Well, be shocked. They've got, they've got Aptex, no LDAC, but they do have Aptex, which is cool. Scott Pleasure saying, is it just me or does the semi-transparent plastic of the case look super cheap? Yeah, I mean, if I'm perfectly honest, I'm not a big fan of that aesthetic. Uh, and it's even, um, it's even stronger on the purple and the pink ones. Maybe I actually kind of like the purple and the pink ones a little bit better because they just feel more different. They feel more like a Game Boy or something like that. Whereas this, I can, I can, I can see what you're talking about. Yeah, transparent 
electronics. Hmm. It's a thing some things do really well. These, I think they're, they're okay. Joe S, you're saying you got the Olaf's earfun buds. Pretty great tune, but you constantly are reminded that the TWS are entry level. Yeah, I didn't talk about the pricing on the uh, the Olaf earbuds, but I think I paid 60 or 70 bucks for these. So a little bit cheaper than the Moondrops, um, but also not the cheapest true wireless earbuds. You can spend like 20 or 30 bucks and honestly get some pretty decent stuff. Um, I think these things are all tuned better than anything I've heard under 30 bucks. Uh, but there's still some pretty decent $30 stuff. Manuel asking, is it is it better than Moondrop Aria plus QLX 5K combo? I mean, if you want fewer wires, it's better for that. In terms of sound quality, I don't know. There's a pretty big difference in the tuning between the Sparks and the Aria. Again, the Aria is a lot more warmer, more laid back, more of a, it's not a super bassy earphone, but it is more bass focused, more low end focused. Whereas the, uh, the Sparks is more top end focused and a little bit thinner sounding. Um, I don't know. I, I find both of them are kind of like a little bit too far in one direction for my personal taste. I like something a little bit in between. There's that leaf blower. Um, 8AI low, I, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce that name, but you said, uh, trust me, SPC is all you need, low latency case watch video. So that was actually a thing I didn't really test with the Moondrop Sparks. I didn't test their latency which is a thing with Bluetooth earphones. I mean, pretty much every earphone, every, I shouldn't say pretty much, every single Bluetooth earphone, headphone that I've listened to has some amount of latency. Um, and I guess you're associating SBC with being low latency, but I gotta be honest, I have not noticed, um, I have not no really noticed a latency uh, correlation with codec. It seems, I think it's a little bit more complicated than that. I think these things are Bluetooth 5.2 and Bluetooth 5.0 in general, one of its big improvements was supposedly lower latency, uh, but I pretty much, I entirely evaluated these things based on listening to music. Where latency doesn't matter, I guess is worth clarifying. I saw someone asking, do they have a mic? I'm pretty certain they do, but I never, I did not make a phone call on these things, so I had no idea. I just listened to music. Now, Hefe, cool. Thanks for clarifying no leaf blowers are coming through. I got my window open because it's actually pretty warm today. I mean, it's like, 60, 65, which is pretty warm for where I'm at. Um, and we don't have air conditioning here. Uh, Scott Pledger, I see you're, you're talking about the, 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 the FIO UTWS3s. Um, I actually have those in the living room, been meaning to do a review of those too. I would probably prefer just sticking with a true wireless IAM versus uh, those. The case on the, the, the FIO is honestly pretty chonkers. And then I found, like I was mostly listening to them with the, the FIO FH3 attached to them. And it, it just seems like a pretty obvious downgrade to me versus listening to them over a wire. So uh, if I'm gonna take that obvious downgrade, I might as well just go with something that's a little bit simpler. And honestly, these are my favorite Bluetooth earphones for listening to music still. Tom, you like my shirt? Yeah, sorry, a different shirt today. It's not one of my super review shirts, but repping uh, Triumph Motorcycles. 
don't even own one anymore. I used to. Oh, now Heffy, you're saying that the LightProtect Heavy have been updated with a newer chipset and a different tuning. Interesting. And Scott, you did clarify that the BMW PI57s are their new true wireless options. Interesting. I'll, I mean, I'll say like straight up, I think true wireless is difficult to do. Um, Apple, I think does it really well. Samsung, I think does it pretty well. The touch controls are a pain in the butt here. Um, but apart from that, they do a lot of things pretty well here. But man, like all of like the, the bing bong noises, the lights, in fact, I didn't even talk about that with the lights on these things. These things light up like kind of crazy. Let's see if I can show you that actually. Like. You can see when this thing's charging, there's a light on the front of it that lets you know it's charging. The earpieces light up when they're pairing. I don't think they stay lit when you're wearing them, but also I couldn't see myself, so I'm not totally certain. But yeah, that seems like about what to expect. Um, quite a bit of lights. But anyway, sorry, what I was saying was that um, true wireless, just electronics in general, are hard to do. So there's a lot of audio companies out there, even like Sennheiser. Frankly, I didn't think that Sennheiser did a phenomenal job with the electronics in the Momentum True Wireless 2 that I reviewed last year. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, maybe BMW does it pretty well. Uh, I think Bose does electronics pretty well. Uh, Apple does it pretty well. Samsung does it pretty well. Sony does it okay. Jeremy Kiros, you're saying you would be interested in some super tuned IAMs, maybe someday, uh, but probably not. Night Stalker, how's it going? Greeting Super Review. Is there any chance of getting some insight on the new MND? I think that's Master Dynamics. I have not heard any of those, and I don't currently have any plans to review them, so I wouldn't I wouldn't hold your breath for that. Uh, and El Hefe, I haven't heard the status audio uh, between pros either. I think the last status audio product I heard was the BT-1. It was kind of like an on-ear fitting Bluetooth headphone. Wendigo Smith pointing out that the Samsung Galaxy Buds have an 11 hour battery, which is ostensibly true again. Another thing I have never tested because I've never worn these things for 11 hours straight. Um, but yeah, it's actually really cool to see that like the battery life on these things is getting to the point that you just don't even think about it. They're just probably always gonna be charged. Miguel Lopez, I have not heard the Edifier TWS MV2. Yeah, honestly, like a couple of years ago, I was reviewing quite a bit of true wireless stuff, kind of budget true wireless stuff. And I kind of lost interest in it because it wasn't, it wasn't that different. A lot of it sounded very much the same. Uh, and I ended up landing on, I'll be right back here. I think my favorite budget recommendation, I've got it here in a case somewhere. That's not it. Where is my favorite budget recommendation? All right, here we go. I think my favorite budget recommendation is actually these. And again, these are a couple years old at this point, so there might be better stuff out there. Uh, but this is the Halo GT2. Uh, this is the case that it comes in, not the smallest case, but also not the biggest. You can see it's you know, a little bit chonkier than the earphones. Um, but what I like about these things are a couple of things. One, the tuning on these things is not phenomenal, but these things aren't like gigabase monsters like a lot of other true wireless earphones. In fact, I think these things have less bass than the GT1s, which is an interesting direction, but I appreciate it. Um, and then the other thing that I like about these things is look at this. That's an actual clicking button, which is pretty unreal in the true wireless space. Now the fit on these things is not phenomenal, um, but it's decent enough. So. I find if you're gonna spend around like 30 bucks or less, 
on a true wireless earphone, I do think that the Halau GT2 is still a pretty good option. I don't think it sounds as good as any of these other three, but if you wanna save money, that's a pretty good direction. Trying to catch up with live chat. <laughs> oh, well, Hefe, now you can hear the leaf blower because you switched to headphones. Whew. It's either a leaf blower or I sweat more. And I guess at this point, it's going to be a leaf blower. Although it seems off now. Uh, True Killer, you're asking again about another edifier. I don't, I haven't heard those, so I don't know. My guess is that tuning wise, I'd probably prefer the Sparks, but I can't say. Uh, and you said you really like Moondrop's sound signature, and you have been a huge fan ever since you bought the SSPs, and you're hoping for a similar experience in the Sparks. I mean, I can say. The, the tuning here is gonna be different than what you get on the SSPs. I found the SSPs are probably more mid bassy um, A little bit, yeah, it's been a while since I've listened to the SSPs, so maybe I shouldn't say too much, but I remember them being a lot more mid bassy and kind of, just kind of bloated in the bass, whereas I find that the bass emphasis here on the Sparks is a pretty tasteful amount of bass emphasis. More bass than the SSR, and maybe even more sub bass, honestly, than the SSP. I'm not sure. Um, but I think definitely less mid bass. And Scott, you're saying you found that latency with Bluetooth has a lot more to do with the hardware implementation than the codec. And that's, that seems about right. Like I, I, I really just have not seen a strong correlation with uh, the codecs. I'm sure if I was like building a, a true wireless IM or anything Bluetooth, and I had sort of like the option to take the exact same hardware and flip a switch and go between codecs, you'd, you'd probably start picking out some differences. Um, but based on the way that I hear things, I hear things in their final implementations. I just haven't seen that connection. Oh cool, now we got a dog howling outside. It sounds like it's like howling with the uh, sirens that just went by. A wild day, huh? Scott Pledger, you said you'd love to see me do a review of a Triumph, even though I should never ever under any circumstances be allowed to own a motorcycle. Um, motorcycles are a lot of fun. I did love my Triumph. I had a 20, 2013 Triumph Street Triple R, and that was definitely a lot of fun. Although I did find, honestly, I prefer smaller motorcycles, so. Um, yeah, I don't know. I prefer a smaller motorcycle that I feel like I can just kind of throw around. I can rev the snot out of and not actually break the speed limit. Whereas the Triumph, you didn't really have to even try and you would break the speed limit. World's fastest motorcycles, not true at all, uh, but it was definitely, it was definitely faster than I needed it to be. Something like a Ninja 400. That's a, that's about the perfect amount of power for my taste. And Rob Hawk, see you saying that Sony is going to be releasing new true wireless earbuds soon. Um, they're rumored to have LDAC. Yeah, it looks like, I think I just saw a picture someone shared in my Discord server, which if you're not there already, link in the description down below. Um, but someone just shared a picture of what looked like the, um, ostensibly the WFXM4s. So it's going to be Sony's new true wireless earphone. I'm, my, the biggest thing I would love for them to fix is make that case smaller. I don't know that they're gonna do it though. We'll see. How are you? I have not used the topping NX4, so I don't know.
Uh, and Changu, I see you're asking about the, the Bluetooth codec. The Sparks support up to AppDex, which they did, they connected uh, with no problems via AppDex to my Sony Xperia 10. Big Boss, you heard the police sirens. Anyone hear the dog yowling? <laughs> oh, Jeremy, you're saying that the new Sony case does look smaller from what you've seen. Interesting. I will be on the lookout for that for sure. Um, you know, I reviewed the Sony WH XM3s. It was the over-ear noise-canceling headphone that everybody has. And I did not like it very much. Um, and because I didn't like it very much, that's why I didn't even bother with the XM4s. The X, the WF XM3s, however, the true wireless earphones with almost the exact same name, surprisingly, actually sound pretty good. Um, I don't know if it's just a difference in that, you know, Sony is able to tune IMs better than closed back headphones. It seems to be a pretty common pattern that IMs sound better than closed back headphones. Um, or if they just went with a different target and a different idea with the IMs, but I found that the XM, the WF XM3 has actually sounded pretty decent. Maybe a little bit warm and bassy for my taste from what I recall, but pretty, pretty solid sound. So I am pretty interested to see what they do with the XM4s. Gustavo, I have not tested the TWS-2. Scott, you're saying you just want to appreciate that I actually go through the whole live chat. I do my best. Uh, I certainly miss some, but uh, I do I do try. Um, yeah, glad you appreciate it. Mocha Rain saying I should check out the Moondrop Nameless. It's one of those shower heads with a mid high high tune. So I'm guessing um, is that one of the uh, their earbuds? I, I just recently reviewed the NICE HCK EBX21, and in that video I compared it to nine other earbuds that I've got. So I now have a collection of 10 earbuds, um, and there seems to be a lot of interest in the earbud market and not a lot of coverage on YouTube. So I'm definitely interested in doing more there. Um, I'll, see, I'll see if Moondrop's interested in um, sending me some stuff, because I would definitely be interested in checking out, you said, the Nameless, and there's also the Chicane or Chicone or something like that. I'm interested in checking out. Carlos Silva saying, honestly, the Galaxy Buds Plus are where it's at for me. Battery life is great. Sound is good uh, for TWS and the microphones are good quarantine conference calls. Interesting. I've definitely never made a phone call on them or a conference call, uh, but that's true of pretty much every wireless earphone, except for AirPods. I have done it with AirPods. Because I am an Apple shill. That's not true. I don't think it's true. Scott Pledger, wow. Appreciate the super chat. <laughs> really appreciate that, man. Uh, let me comb back through chat and see if there's anything I missed. But that might be the end of this video. Um, folks, really appreciate you hanging out, chatting. Uh, it makes these live streams more interesting. And if you wanna continue chatting, like I've mentioned before, I have a Discord server with a link in the description down below. Um, you can join that chat. I'm there way, way too much. But yeah, if you wanna talk headphones, you wanna talk uh, earphones, you wanna talk sharing some music and stuff like that, it's a good place to, to, to drop into. But yeah, that's been the Moondrop Sparks. One last look at them. Um, if you're interested in checking these things out, of course, check that link in the description. Uh, hit the like button if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, etc. And then I'll see you in the next super review. Have a good evening.